I was just sitting here thinking about the skeptics, not just people, but the skeptics in the category of all by themselves about the rapture of the church. And, you know, let's give credit to credit that's due. Some of them have valid reasons why they might be skeptics because there are just skeptics by nature. One, two, they may be disenfranchised, okay? So we're just giving it two reasons that may be valid for why they are the way they are. That doesn't make it right, okay? So hold on, hold on before you go and say, oh, she's giving skeptics a pat on the back. I'm not. I'm saying that there's reasons why skeptics are the way they are, okay? They are in the Bible. They are there to cause you to stumble, if anything. You know, they're the ones that are going to recite the Bible without even reading the Bible themselves, you know? So, to title this, The Skeptics of the Bible, <laughs> that would be like putting it lightly, but this is more, maybe we could make that broad statement, but, you know, making that state statement is broad, but it is always about the rapture of the church. You notice a lot of them will say, well, they said that a thousand years ago or 2000 years ago. Okay. This is what they say. Okay. They, uh, that do this. Um, and you have to remember, we don't always have an easy, fast comeback, okay? And I know this because <laughs> I've been caught in this, one of those situations where they'll tell me, oh, well, you know, they were waiting for Jesus in back in the time of the early church. <laughs> I said, yeah, but Israel wasn't a nation until 1948, that totally messes it all up for them. They totally don't get that. Okay, so why, what is so fascinating about the skeptics? The skeptics are the ones that really know how to twist the words around or twist things around. They want you to believe it their way, okay? And they can be very convincing because they're educated, they're smarter. In some ways, they're more intellectuals. Uh, they might be more schooled in mythology or something like that. I, I, I don't know what they, I, I can't assume they are schooled in anything. I can just say this, this was such an issue that I thought, is too important to ignore this topic is like broader than just what I'm saying here today tonight but we got a lot of skeptics out there that will debunk the rapture and debunk it and make other people think that they're just crazy you're crazy for believing that there's some kind of rapture or return of the Lord or the man in the clouds is going to come and just swoop you up like that kind of stuff. How foolish are you? It's coming so close. We don't know how soon it really is. We, we know one thing. It could happen in 2023, 2024. It's just how ready are you here spiritually. And... A lot of things that we're doing in our lives are about us examining ourselves daily. And we have to be able to get through those things itself and pray to the Lord to help us through it so that we can be prepared for his return. And to me, some of us are not ready. We're not ready for the return of the Lord. We want the Lord to come. We're not ready. We're not ready for the holy God Almighty 
to take us back to be with him because it's a holy place we're going to and we're going to be this corruptible body has to be changed to incorruptible so we need to to know a lot of things about the lord in this little short amount of time that we have he comes back let's just say he comes back january 2023 let's just give an estimate that's enough time between now and all, and that point for us to get our lives together and examine ourselves daily, put on the full armor of God, and, and walk with the Lord for whatever amount of time that is and get right with the Lord. That is. That is enough time. I say that even if it is only 30 days, it's enough time to straighten out your life and get right with the Lord. Get on your knees and just get right. So, let's just say that hypothetically. If it doesn't happen, we just got to continue doing this work that we have to do. The inner healing, the spiritual changes that we need to make by prayer and supplication and all the things that were taught that are in the Bible about being changed by the Holy Spirit. Edify. The words in the Bible are say, said to edify by these words, to encourage each other. So we encourage each other to change for the better and that change has to come by the power of the Holy Spirit. So with that said, I got to stop here because my time is running out. And thank you for watching. God bless you. And good night.